Hi everyone, welcome to the December 2022 edition of Farsight's Human News. The remote viewing news forecast show that tells you what is going to happen, not what did happen. I am Aziz Brown from Farsight. Before I go on, let's recap what happened with our last human news forecast. Four of our sessions by Intisum, Kamaya Dunson, Shantae, and Yeme Jeanne dealt with what appears to have been a wartime situation with explosions in urban areas that seemed to be targeting civilian populations and infrastructure. Indeed, that was the big change in the Ukraine war that happened quite surprisingly in November. The war has been going quite badly from a military perspective for Russia, so there was a change in tactics. In an attempt to subdue the Ukrainian will to fight, Russia started to use missiles to attack the Ukrainian energy infrastructure, which happens to be in population centers. It has been a major war news month, and energy is needed for heating, as has happened historically and repeatedly in that area of the world, going back to the times of Napoleon and Hitler, winter is being used as a weapon. Russia has defeated many enemies by letting them freeze to death. Ukraine is really cold in the wintertime, and all of this energy infrastructure destruction was done using flying weaponry, mostly missiles launched by aircraft, which is exactly what our viewers described. In my own session, I reported on three subjects meeting in a large structure to sign important papers. The people were more than a little nervous. We are not sure what this refers to during the month, but it may involve the Russian decision to try to destroy the energy infrastructure in Ukraine, or it may involve some other thing related to some other place and some other event. The only thing that we feel comfortable saying is that such an important meeting probably happened, and something important was probably signed. I hope that one day we will find out what that was all about. That is the thing about remote viewing the future. Sometimes important things happen and we don't always get immediate feedback on everything. Now, let me announce our next major mysteries project, Galactic Defense. That's right, this is a special project that we hope assists the US military and perhaps some other human militaries who may be thinking about working to force disclosure of the extraterrestrial presence here on Earth. You see, if disclosure happened, there will be a fight. It is not going to be just a bunch of news stories. Disclosure will trigger a reptilian and Orion attempt to keep control of the planet. If they can no longer do it with mental manipulation, bribery, fear, intimidation, propaganda, and secrecy, and if their past activities are finally disclosed to the public, then they will have no alternative than to come out of the shadows and threaten to fight. That's when the free will ETs will intervene to stop them. And that will be a military effort of no small measure. Well, if this were to happen, the human militaries would naturally want to know what has happened in similar situations in other parts of the galaxy when such things happened. When the totalitarian forces acted in a military way to control a planet's population. To be honest, that seems to be a strategy of last resort for the totalitarian forces. But when push comes to shove, that is their only alternative. So what happens? Well, our next project focuses on the most important battle between the most successful group in the Milky Way galaxy to defend themselves from a reptilian military attack intended to conquer or control them. And on the 15th of December, 2022, you will see that there were a number of successful events to repel the reptilian forces, and all of them were equally important and successful. And you are going to see how those battles turned out and exactly what was done to win them. Again, on December 15th, in just about two weeks, it really is a must-see project, one that will tell you a lot about how other societies have successfully repelled attempts to control them by totalitarian forces. It's a big deal. We hope that the US military is watching, of course, but everyone else needs to see this as well. The hope 
to obtain freedom is not something that you just dream about. It is accomplished by doing real and concrete steps, and we learn by watching how others do these things. Then, by watching how others do these things, we get realistic levels of hope that we can do it too. December 15th, only on FarsightPrime.com. Moving on, we continue to publish our Seco Plus long-term forecasts for various cryptocurrencies, and we are highly interested in doing this. As we have mentioned in the past, the current downturn in the cryptocurrency markets were a predicted feature in many of our Seco forecasts. So we are not worried about it. This downturn in the cryptocurrency markets may last through much of 2023. The Wild West days of the early cryptocurrency phenomena seem to be coming to an end with regulators starting to come in. So we feel it is really important to know something about which cryptocurrencies will survive and thrive into the future. So we continue to do our forecast that you can find on our website, farsight.org. And of course, remember our disclaimer, no one at Farsight is a licensed financial advisor. So anything that anyone at Farsight does that relates to using remote viewing to predict financial or economic outcomes of any type, including the performance, however defined, or selling prices of cryptocurrencies, stocks, commodities, or anything else is done for entertainment and educational purposes only. Everyone doing investments are doing so at their own risk. These are experiments in remote viewing, and there are no guarantees or warranties being made either expressed or implied. Nonetheless, these efforts are truly interesting on a grand scale, and we at Farsight believe that after we do this for a while, it will be hard for anyone to ignore the reality of remote viewing. Moving on. For those who want personalized instruction in remote viewing, Yeme Jene and Intisum are teaching remote viewing both individually and in groups. Our methods are sufficiently complex that we use pre-printed templates for our sessions. Yeme and Intisum can work with you individually or in groups as you learn to use these methods. Our approaches address a wide range of applications that we do here at Farsight, including investment evaluations and forecasting. We do lots of stuff that nobody else does, and it's a big subject. But for those who are interested, Yeme and Intisum will show you how we do what we do. Be patient in learning any of our methods. Nothing that we do was learned in a day. Yeme Jene will also be teaching courses in telepathy in January. So she is signing up students for those special topics now for those January courses. Also, understand that when Yeme and Intisum teach remote viewing, no one at Farsight gets any financial benefit from this. Yeme and Intisum do this entirely on their own. Remember also that there is a large collection of instructional videos on farsightprime.com. So, how do you hear about all of our activities that we do at Farsight so that you can participate and get the latest when they happen, including our live streams? To start with, we use our email list and YouTube to make our major event announcements. So, there are two things that you need to do. First, you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember to click the notifications bell that appears after you subscribe. That is the only way that YouTube will notify you of the new events, especially our live stream events. Just subscribing doesn't actually do anything. The notification bell is the important part, but that only notifies you of the things that we release on YouTube. To be notified about the things that we release on farsightprime.com, which you can watch using your Apple and Android apps on the web and on your home TV, you need to subscribe to our free email newsletter found on our website at farsight.org. You can also allow our apps to notify you of our new releases on farsightprime.com. Be sure to do all three things. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Farsight, and remember to click the notifications bell. And then subscribe to our free email newsletter that you can find on our website, farsight.org. And finally, go to the settings of our app and allow it to give you notifications of our new releases on farsightprime.com. The links for YouTube and our newsletter are in the description area below this video. And the app is, well, it's on your phone. Those are how we announce what we do. We never send out spam and we never give out our subscriber lists to anyone else 
for any purpose. Now, let's move on to this month's human news forecast for December 2022. Remember, we could always be wrong and all remote viewing must be seen as an experiment, not a certainty. But look at the data for yourself, make your own decisions, and then let's watch the month roll out to see what actually happens. We have five remote viewers who participated in this month's project. Kamaya Dunson, Yeme Jeanet, Intisum, Shante, and myself, Aziz Brown. These reports are amazing to watch. It is best if you just watch them without me trying to explain them in advance. So let's begin our forecast for December 2022. I will return after all of the reports are presented to help pull everything together. Starting off, I have man-made and natural land here. And I've got a land and water interface. So it's like water in the background and then land in the foreground. There seems to be um, some sort of like structure out here, maybe some other small ones, but for the most part, like one large structure out um, on this water. Okay, there are subjects on the structure and there are subjects on the base surface as well, like the land. So there's kind of subjects out here chilling. Okay, now we also see this like large looking um, line in the sky that comes downwards to the body of water. So something like that and then it, this and then I see a big kind of hue around the structure. There are subjects here. They're mostly male subjects. Um, if not everyone, a male subject on this surface structure here. Again, out here, it just feels kind of like there's man-made land. Um, there might be some small structures, uh, some subjects here, but nothing like too big or anything like that. Um, so I've got a non-surface structure as well. Okay, so a non-surface structure is some sort of line in the sky and then a big hue around a non I mean around a surface structure. For my second visual I have again this kind of water looking background and then now I see um, pieces of a structure you know so it, it, none of these feel like complete structures they all feel like if this structure had came apart or something and they're kind of just scattered out in the water. I still see this line in the sky like that. And then I do see, again, another non-surface structure kind of just in the distance, though. Like, um, and it doesn't have, like, a definite shape from where I'm at. It just kind of looks like something in the sky. So there's a non-surface structure here. Um, there are no subjects inside of this non-surface structure as well. So it definitely feels like a vessel of some sort. You know, something that just carries cargo or carries something, but it doesn't carry people. Um, there are subjects in this water. Many subjects in the water. Um, and it also feels like some of these subjects are unconscious. Um, some of them do not make it after this. I do see something that looks like I don't want to say like explosion aftermath, but like explosion aftermath. It, you can just see like the water kind of splashing up like this, coming out like that. There's energetics here all around. Um, energetics, energetics, energetics surrounding these subjects and these kind of structure pieces in the water. For my last visual, I see a large body of water. Um, and then some land in the distance. I do have these pieces of a structure that seem to be floating around, okay? Then I have a couple of subjects here also sitting in this water. And I can see these lines, um, not just the line that goes here, right? Okay, we see, we see that one. But then there's also lines in the sky where you can see that a non-surface structure has been like 
going back and forth in the sky. So it's like a line here and a line there, and a line like that. And line. So it's just obviously this non-surface structure is flying around this area um, until something hits this surface structure right here. And this is like the only time I really see the surface structure as a whole on the base surface. Um, so it's like I'm deducting a boat um, or something like that, like a, a ship. Along those lines, something that obviously floats on water, um, was um, hit with something, fell apart into many pieces, the subjects in the water, the pieces of the structure are in the water, and there's a lot of energetics. There's a lot of energetics around here. And then this non-surface structure that is in the distance, gone. So when I move to the target event, when I'm at the target event, I see this surface structure on water. I see maybe like a distant city on land, like way back there. But for the most part, like we're really deep out in this water. I see the line from the sky. There's a big roar, a lot of rumbles, and then energetics start to fill the area. The subjects, some of them, well, really everyone feels frightened. They feel scared. They feel worried. And then... The ones that don't feel that way, like they don't, they don't feel conscious, and um, just overall a lot of freaking out. That's just the main thing here. There's a lot of emotions. They're all over the place. This non-surface structure, again, it doesn't contain any subjects in it. Um, it definitely feels like it kind of came over to where this was, did what it needed to do, and then left. There are subjects that are, of course, still alive and still conscious here. Um, these subjects in the water, you know, not everybody dies or becomes unconscious. Like a lot of them are still alive, which is great. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what's happening here at the target event. A non-surface structure implode or explodes a, a surface structure on water. There are subjects in it. People die. People don't die. Um, so moving to the target event, I sense that there's like this feeling of like intense anger. It definitely feels emotionally driven. It doesn't feel like something that was really like thought out all the way as far as the consequences to these actions. It definitely feels like somebody was angry, somebody fell some type of way, and they said they, they're going to get even. So... Not saying that one particular person made this happen. This is a collaborative event, but there is one main person who seems to be like really irate, and they are the ones who kind of set this plan into motion. The subject that I'm referring to um, is a male subject, and they seem to be um, like average size, I guess. Not too big, but not thin either, and a, um, they have paler skin, they have sh very, very, very short brown hair, um, and it looks like they may have like blue eyes or something like that, but that's like the main subject here that is opposed to these subjects that are on this surface structure. One thing I did want to add, though, is like, so here I drew one non-surface structure, right? I drew one non-surface structure in like the one line because there is one non-surface structure that actually hits their surface structure. But I will say that like there's multiple lines in the sky and I do technically see multiple non-surface structures. They're just like back here, you know what I mean? And they didn't do this. They may have been flying around, they may have been trying to hit different things, but they didn't hit this, so only one struck. I mean, only one non-surface structure has caused this event to happen. And yeah, that's all I have for this target. Okay, for this target, I have a base surface with level topography. Um, I this area looks like land water interface. Um, my first visual will be from a bird's eye view. So, I have the water that's very extensive. Um, when I taste it, it does taste like it's salty water. And then, 
there's a urban environment here it it feels like a city but um a smaller city it doesn't feel like it's a huge city there is a group of subjects here feels like a crowd so now i'm going to move closer see what i have all right so for my next visual i'm in this urban environment, uh, I can see structures all around. The structures are man-made, however, they feel like brick or stone. And then there's a crowd that's formed. So there are quite a few people, subjects here. It's a very loud environment. I'm getting there's like a banging type noise, there's sirens, um, voices, and I'm like a little wailing voices type thing. Uh, let me just fill in with the structures. Okay, so some of these subjects appear to be injured. They're laying down. Uh, I'm getting like quite a, quite a few of them laying down and then there's like subjects kneeling over them. Looks like they're trying to tend to these subjects. And there is like red, like a pool of blood, pool of like red liquid that's collecting at the bottom. Um, there's also like energetics here, but it's more like one directional energetics. So I would, I would like deduct like maybe a gun or something similar. But it's it's I can the energetics is definitely there, but it is one one directional. So it feels like a fast kinetic type movement, like a whoosh, something like that. Okay. And then yeah, that liquid that's collecting. So there are some subjects that are kind of like holding things up. The temperature here is quite cooler. Um, I'm also getting like cars, like vehicles. There's like... So definitely like vehicles present. So at first glance, you'd have thought it was like, you know, like a typical um, urban environment, but except for the kind of like the activity that's happening here, the kind of like chaos and commotion um, with these subjects that are either unconscious or maybe dead, like this one by the look of it, the, there's honestly a lot of blood on the ground here. All right, so now moving to the target activity. Um, the target activity, this is going to be pretty repetitive, but it's definitely um, coming from within this, within this urban environment with a, a lot of chaotic movement. Um, the chaotic movement is coming from around the subject, and then I'm noticing with the energetics, it's actually coming from multiple points within this crowd. So something must have happened here. Um, I would deduct something like a shooting, uh, something like that. Loud banging sounds, voices, uh, shouting. Okay, now moving to the target event. I feel like this crowd forms after the energetic events happens. So the the crowd kind of comes in after that there's a loud sound followed by fire uh, heat energetics combined with like one directional energetics these subjects some of these subjects i can sense like a very faint life force others have no life force um, 
Probing the source of energetics, it seems to be within this urban environment, somewhere within the subjects that were in this area. Okay, so now I will do a deep mind probe. Okay, so I'm doing a deep mind probe. Um, this deep mind probe is from is tied to the source of the energetics, whatever um, a subject that had something to do with it. That was my intention when I was doing this deep mind probe, and. I'm getting that anger, like a blinding anger, a, a, a deep rage. Um, I'm getting that this was kind of like an automatic reaction. Like they were already decided. Um, there was no thought behind it. It was kind of like I've decided, so I'm going to go move along. I'm going to do this. I'm also getting a sense of following instructions without question. Whoever did this, I'm getting a sense of like there were those I'm getting a sense of instructions behind it, although I'm kind of going pretty high level here because I'm trying to find the source. So, hmm. Okay, so there's also an overwhelming sadness and numbness. I'm getting that whoever I'm deep mind probing right now, they also feel quite numb within themselves. Okay, overall, very tragic, very, very tragic event here. The last thing I'm noticing about this environment is there is foliage, although scattered. When I'm looking, I'm seeing it's mostly brown hues. There are like flashes of colors like reds, blues, greens, other, other places, but predominantly brown. Uh, when I look at the subjects, uh, I'm seeing mostly light, light skin tones. And their clothing feels very stiff, heavy clothing. That's all I have for this target. I have a lot of open land with structures. Here the land is both natural and man-made. <clears throat> We've got a lot of subjects, both male and female. Uh, I see some water. I'm, I believe I am near water somewhere. Um, <clears throat> structures that are made of both man-made and natural material, have subjects inside the structure and a multitude of subjects outside the structure. Um, very focused, um, focused gathering, uh, urban environment. I've got like a street full of of subjects here is like just laid out like pew. and um, and then <clears throat> and then I have this um this structure that has a uh, like tiered looking reminds me of Capitol Building White House type of feeling and texture those are deductions and what it looks like stairs or a walkway to lead towards the door. And uh, I have structures d distant behind and foliage near around, open land, lots of space here. Um, roadways or man-made land, tar looking, uh, tar and cement looking here. And subjects play, or structures um, placed near just you know you uh, spread out you kind of see the the urban environment a slightly secluded space open environment here uh, this feels very political um i am getting the deductions of election uh deduction of white house deductions of political political and capital building here <clears throat> within this space There's a lot of heightened energy here, loud noises. Sounds of shouting, rhythmic chanting, movement, aggressive energy, and a waiting energy. Very focused gathering, many subjects, just full here, very central location. And there's also a central subject here uh, that is, um, 
not adjacent, but across or parallel to the bulk, the multitude of subjects. Seems very important. There's a lot of excitement and exclamation. Again, high energy. I also feel anger. Hmm. It's just a lot of crowding within the streets. I also see moving, uh, moving surface structures nearby, people placed in certain spaces, um, looking like, it looks like there is a situation here, and then here we have uh, the, the lot looking there, and there seems to be two central structure or subjects here in the front, front view is what I'm looking at. And then there are other beings or subjects placed around, surrounding, feels authoritative or protection oriented. A lot of cloud dynamics, action, a lot of movement. They want something. It, it, there also seems to be this storming effect. I'm not sure where this is. Not like ring, boom, storming, but like the storming of subjects, a walking, a mass moving forward and one or dual multiple directions. I can feel <clears throat> A lot of subjects outside almost waiting, again, uh, both patient and impatiently, inside and outside the structure. The, this, the subject that everyone is looking at here, I'm guessing, or focused on is speaking. And, and again, they're all agitated or excited and hyper, you name it. There's a fluctuation of energy and emotions going on here. They, subjects are standing shoulder to shoulder. Like I said, it's full. It's cool in temperature. Um, they, they are moving, uh, what I am seeing now is they are moving in, in a formation, in a formation of a mob. I'm going to deduct mob because I don't want to say that, but in a formation of like just a mob of people, some again content, others angry, all chanting, rhythmic, rhythmic speaking. And, and again, there are authoritative figures, um, figures here as well. Uh, I'm seeing colors of green in, in the surface, on the surface surface, te textured hard tar, gravel, cement like grass, green, white, gray, black colors, mild foliage. The subjects are casual, warm clothing, casually dressed, warm, warm clothing. Yeah. So I've got this central structure, slew of subjects, both in and out, foliage as we branch out within the miles or whatnot. Town, city is urban environment stationed, you know, other structures here and land, man-made and natural. And then, bam, all these subjects and things happening here um, within the city. It looks like a great city, a, a great city. Hmm.
So to start off this target, I'm noticing just a subject, uh, and the subject is just standing in a room. That's the first perceptual that I'm getting. Uh, subject, indoors, and in a rectangular room. So that seems to be where the data begins. Okay, so zooming out a bit further, I'm beginning to see that there are two subjects. One subject seems to be uh, in darker formal attire, and the other subject seems to also be in formal attire, albeit it's a little bit of a different hue. Maybe it's a little more brownish or a little bit more um, uh, grayish, but it's formal attire nonetheless. Two subjects standing facing each other, in formal attire. So uh, just drawing out this subject over here. There you go. Sort of formal dress. This subject over here seems like they at the moment have their hands uh, in their pockets or behind them, something like that. And they are standing facing each other. So the other subject, I'll be consistent with the coloring, the other subject is standing over here, this way, and this subject is, uh, his back is this way, so he's facing this other subject. All right, and this subject does not seem like this subject has his hands hidden in any way, uh, pockets or uh, anywhere else, it just seems like the subject's standing there like this, while well, this subject seems like his hands are in his pockets or behind him or something like that. But nonetheless, these two subjects, formal attire, they are looking at each other. And that is the beginning of the session. Two subjects, uh, both seem male, staring at each other in a room. All right, so zooming out a little bit, let's just draw out the environment that I'm seeing it seems like there is a bit of water over here, a land water interface. And over on this area, there seems to be some structures. So a bit of a more urban feel. And inside one of the taller structures over here, that is where we will find a room. And inside that room, we will find are two subjects standing and facing each other inside a room which seems to be in an urban area which seems to be at a land water interface so there's some water here at the target and uh, yeah that seems to be the gist of what the target environment is all right so from what i'm seeing from the more grayish hued uh, subject that seems to be facing the other subject who has his hands a bit hidden or in his pockets or something. I'm seeing the subject with the dark hued formal attire, the one who had his hands hidden. He seems like he's pulling out an object of some sort. So just to draw the rough visual of what I'm seeing, uh, the, dark, the dark formal attired subject, dark hues attired subject, Seems like his attire is maybe slightly more formal, but that just might be my impression due to the fact that it's a darker hued clothing. But it seems like the subject holds out his hand and there is an object there. So at this point, the subject does begin to step forward towards the other subject and with his hands grasping this semi-long sort of pointed object. All right, that seems like that is what the subject is doing. Standing there and first hands are hidden and then has a sharp pointed object in one hand. And so uh, this hand is a regular sized hand. Sorry for drawing it so sloppily. But either way, that's the gist of what's happening next at this sort of target activity perception area. I'm seeing one of the subjects with the darker hued attire 
Seems like he is approaching the other subject with more gray hues attire that looks slightly less formal, but still in the formal category. And he goes over and he pulls out a sharp object. So let's find out what happens next. All right, so I am seeing the more formal attired subject. He is stepping forward and there's gonna be some movement. So I'm gonna start drawing him as a stick figure. So he steps forward and he's got this, uh, he's got the object. Let's draw that over here. This sharp pointed object. And as he's approaching the other subject, the other subject seems like he's got a bit more grayish hued, semi-formal attire. And he is not really moving out of the way or anything. He sort of just extended his hands out like this, sort of just being, being like this. And so this guy, he was over here. He's stepping towards this subject over here. This subject moves his hands out like this and doing a quick, quick deep mind probe. All right, so just general perceptions. This guy's got a lot of tense energy. He feels like all of his muscles are sort of stiffening up and he's sort of moving forward and he's just got this like really sort of tense aura about him. He's got this sort of, uh, his mind is very tense. His muscles are tensing up. This guy, I feel a lot of nervous energy and a lot of sort of cold worrying energy. And he's sort of just like, like this and sort of speaking sort of frantically and talking. This guy does not seem like he's listening to any of that. He's just sort of tensing up and moving forward towards this other subject. So let's find out what happens next. All right, so just to illustrate it out with some more stick figures. Um, so we've got this sort of thrusting motion and the object right here has been thrust into the sort of this area, like the chest sort of area on the left hand side, but sort of right here. But uh, then the subject over here well, I guess I should draw his head a little bit closer, but this subject is, uh, well, I was gonna draw his head right here. <laughs> his, this subject has been stabbed with this, or stuck with this uh, object right here, right in the chest area. And uh, yeah, we can sort of scratch that one out. Yeah, so he gets stuck right here and he sort of like bends forward for a second, but he doesn't like do much. His hands are just sort of like, frozen like this and he's just sort of like oh and you, i see him in his eyes just sort of like he looks down and he sees this like puncturing of this object like in him right here and then the next moment later the scene looks a bit more like this where you've got the subject with the object uh walking away right here moving that way and the subject that got stuck right here in the chest, the left side of the chest, this subject seems like he is in a fetal position on the ground, just sort of lying so on his side on the ground like this, sort of quite like in a fetal position, quite, a, quite a curled up in a ball. And that does seem to be the whole event at the target. The target involves two uh, males, in formal and other formal, just slightly different colored attire. And one of them pulls out a sharp object, goes right up to the other one, sticks them right in the chest, the chester or sort of upper abdomen region. And uh, then he falls over, curls up into a ball, and the attacker just sort of walks away. That does conclude all of my data for the target. So for my first visual, I have a base surface with a regular topography. Um, there's 
multiple steep peaks and mountains. And I have cloud dynamics somewhat below some of these like steep peaks and areas of very high elevation. There's very cold temperatures here. Um, and I also have, I'd say, extensive foliage, like a very natural environment here. Just kind of foliage scattered throughout the area. Um, so looking like closer into like each mountain, there's mostly natural land, very like hard, rough textures. Um, but I'm also seeing there's like some man-made land kind of wrapping around, kind of weaving throughout these mountains and a lot of foliage. So yeah, this is like areas of man-made land, but mostly natural, a mostly natural environment. Um, so on the base surface, I'm picking up, there's like multiple vehicles. Um, oh, it's the same color. So seeing vehicles moving on the base surface. And this seems to be movement in one direction and really more of like an upward movement. Um, so like I see these vehicles basically moving up, kind of going around like ascending to the the peaks of this mountainous areas. Um, and these are like really surrounded by foliage, like very dense foliage close to the, um, close to the man-made land. And it really like drops off like very steep areas close to the base surface. So, um, or the base surface has very steep, like drop offs here. Um, so add some of these like, I'm getting like visuals of, there's some structures, um, but as we have like the row kind of like winding up, there's just like a few like small areas, like a little kind of cleared out area with a few structures and It seems like as most of the the vehicles that I see here continue to move, like some of them, there will be like a few that kind of stop off on these side areas. But for the most part, there's continuous movement up. And as like as I get to these higher areas, I'm seeing somewhat flatter area with larger structures, like the structures below are kind of small, very simple, but I'm seeing more complex structures 
higher up. Um, and there still is more, like I see a few more paths leading even higher beyond this little, I'll call it like a town, like a, a small urban area, like beyond this area there is more structures, like more, like higher mountain areas. But this town seems to be like the focus. Um, I have subjects, most of them seem to be inside the structure. Um, and there's like very cold temperatures at this level. Okay, so to get like a To get like a bigger picture of this area, like there's the continuous mountains um, and there's like these winding roads, like switchbacks leading up to this town. Um, and It gets to like, hmm. there's not a lot of subjects here. Like the subjects in the vehicles, like there's a few vehicles and they're for the most part kind of spaced out. I'm seeing these, like the shapes are, are larger, like some sort of truck, like something that can carry like a lot of objects. There are a few like smaller vehicles, but for the most part, I'm seeing like trucks, um, larger vehicles moving up towards this town. Um, but what I'm seeing, like what's really noticeable, so it's already like a very slow movement. And it seems like they're reaches a point where the movement is just like cut off, like it's just stopped. And I'm hearing like talking sounds and shouting sounds here. Um, but yeah, there's like something that's stopping the flow of this upward winding movement. It's just like a very abrupt stop. Um, so kind of looking at the cause of this stop, it's like there's vehicles moving in one direction, like they're all going in one direction, but then I'm seeing this one vehicle, yeah, it's another like vehicle that seems to be kind of displaced, like just in the way that's stopped. And what's, this is like a very small area compared to like all the, the natural like land that's in foliage nearby. Like the man-made land here is very, like a very narrow, small area. So there's this slow movement that just stops. And there's, this is an, a pretty large vehicle that's stopped here. And I have a few subjects. It's like maybe five subjects that seem to be like they're standing outside of this vehicle and subjects in their remaining vehicles, they're just really like, oh, what's going on? Um, you know, why, why aren't we flowing? Why aren't we moving? And these subjects are just in the way, kind of blocking that movement. Um, so if I look like there does seem to be a main like leader among these five. He's like a, definitely a male subject has like, uh, 
kind of scraggly appearance, like definitely an unkempt look about him. Um, they're all, all the subjects are wearing these dark, dark hued clothing, maybe like dark green, um, kind of appearance. And I'm seeing kind of like hat. It has some facial hair. And he does look a bit aged, like I would say this guy could be like 40, like around the age of 40. Um, and just has like a disheveled um, appearance to him. So these subjects, what I'm, I'm hearing like loud sounds, mostly like talking, shouting sounds, kind of going back and forth between the subjects in the vehicle. And this subject, um, just kind of shouting, like obviously like he needs to get out of the way, he's not getting out of the way. And doing a deep mind probe of this subject, he definitely, like, he feels kind of angry or assertive. Um, definitely not someone I would trust. Like, this guy feels a little sketchy, like, um, but also, like, he's the leader of these group of subjects, but he's also seems like he doesn't have, like, a lot of real power other outside of this, um, like, kind of weak or not really important in general, but he managed to get here. Like he was maybe told to come here and purposely like block off this area just so these subjects cannot continue to go up and reach this like town at the top of the mountain here. Um, yeah, he's, the subject is definitely not well perceived by even like the subjects that are with him, but the remaining subjects in the area. Um, so I would say for these subjects that are kind of on the other side of this, they, they don't recognize this main subject here. He's just kind of like, where's this guy coming from? Why, like, they're just, they don't understand, like, why is he not moving out the way? Um, but these subjects are not, it seems like there's not much they can do as far as like, like, unless these subjects choose to move, they can't really do anything. That's that's what it's feeling like. So they're just kind of like waiting, waiting. Um, but they do, their intention is to reach this town and these subjects seem to be more connected. Like the subjects in these vehicles moving up and the subjects at this town here um, and also looking at the subjects here, they, they feel a bit worried or definitely confused as if they're expecting these subjects. They're like waiting. They shouldn't have been held up this long, I guess. Um, and they have no idea what's going down, like going on at this like lower area. So the event that I have here, I have like this upward movement throughout this like very hilly, like very mountainous area with these subjects have this destination of this town in mind and it's been obstructed by the subject and it's just a large vehicle um, that seems to be blocking the road. 
Um, and what it, it looks like is that these subjects maybe are very like foreign to this area, like they're, no one really knows who they are, where they come from, or why they're here. Um, but this subject knew that he had to get here like at this specific time to stop these subjects from moving up there. And, but it, now it's seeming like it, it wasn't super thought out as far as like how they're gonna handle what happens when they actually get here besides just not moving. Um, and what I'm seeing, like the importance of like these subjects, what they have inside of their, these vehicles. Um, so it's like a pretty large truck, um, but it also does seem a bit old. Like it's not super, like a, a newer looking truck, kind of rickety, kind of like, maybe not the most reliable looking vehicles, but they make it up here. So inside there's, or like maybe an in, like if I look inside like the back of this, like if there was a subject standing, there's these like piles of objects, very, seems very disorganized, but kind of like boxes and containers and it's, this is kind of like a bigger, like there's a lot of different, I'm seeing like shapes and sizes of containers. Most of them seem to be empty. So maybe like they are intending to fill up these empty containers with whatever the subjects up here have going on. Um, there are a few with like liquids, um, like some of these like jars maybe have a, like a reddish brownish liquid in them. Doesn't seem to have much of a smell but for the most part, most of these are empty. Um, and these have like a very hard texture, like these are containers with a very hard texture. Um, so yeah, what I have here is just this kind of small group of subjects preventing most of the other subjects that are familiar with this area or familiar with this like mm, the land and like the specific trip of going up the mountain to this town so they can make whatever exchange with these like containers so Okay, so let's draw some conclusions from these data. December 2022 is going to be an interesting month. We have one session that focuses on a confrontation between two subjects, possibly with a death. Two sessions seem to focus on what looks like major protests in an urban area. One session seems to concern what looks like an attack on vehicles moving through a mountainous area. And there is one session that seems to focus on what appears to be a military attack on one or more vessels in water. An interesting month. Let's watch the month of December roll out and see what happens. So that is it for our December 2022 edition of Farsight's Human News. The news before it happens. Thank you for watching. Please also join us next month in January 2023 for another look into the future of Earth humans. Also on farsightprime.com. Be sure to look out for our next major mysteries project that will appear in December. Galactic Defense, our live stream events, the Farsight ET News, the next highly unusual intelligence briefing. 
more conversations with Harvey, as well as new Farsight economic forecasts. And remember, we do Farsight at Farsight. Farsight is our style of remote viewing. Vocabulary is important with these changing times. I'm Aziz Brown from Farsight. Stay ahead of the curve. Let the mainstream fade in the dust. Be there now.